man, I could feel this season getting closer and closer. So let's talk about areas of this team that need to improve a little bit. What is up, Finn fans? First off, how y'all doing? I don't think I've really ever started a video, but just by asking you guys how you're doing. How are you doing? Comment below. Let me know. How are you doing? It's Thursday. Next week, the season starts. I want to get a feel for how you guys are doing, how you guys are feeling. Um, I do this video every year, and I will post in the top of the um, description my last year's video on this. And essentially it's Miami Dolphins areas that need to improve or positions that need to step up. I don't know what I name it. Uh, I kind of just go by the seat of my pants really when it comes to naming uh, the videos in general. I just have an idea of what I want to talk about. I talk about it and then, then when I edit it, I'm like, this is the name. But it's area, essentially, I, I did this last year where I kind of talked about positions, areas that need to either step up, need to improve, need to show up or whatever, right? So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. We're gonna, I'm gonna list five. I have about five here. I don't know if these are in a specific order. Yeah, I would say they're probably in a specific order. Um, we're gonna go through that. Comment of the day is a good comment. Um, I got asked a very good question on Twitter uh, and I answered it on Twitter, but I also wanna answer it here because I can, articulate what I want to say more here being that I'm not restricted by how many characters and one of you guys uh, reacted to my reaction with even better like I, I, he said it better than I could have so that's going to be comment of the day um, and one last thing before we jump into the list the pick'em league I'm going to again link it below the password to get in fins up with a capital F a capital U I did not mean that to be on purpose it's just how it is um, so if you want to be in the Pick'em League, again, that is going to, it's a weekly thing. Every week you go on, you sign on to ESPN, you go in, you make your picks every week, and then it keeps score. So join. It's fun, it's free, and the winner is going to get a prize from me. Hopefully it's me, then I give a prize to myself. If not, you get a prize from me. It's fun, it's free. Do it instead of, uh, you know, remember two years ago I did like a pie chart and everything. It's so much work. Um, but the pick, pick video is every Wednesday before the Thursday game, so jump into this uh so last year my fifth area was linebacker my fourth area is wide receiver my third area was defensive line my second area was running back and my first area was offensive line um i think i nailed a good amount of these <laughs> um and th essentially for the dolphins to be successful in 2021 i didn't put quarterback on there because that's an obvious uh again go watch the video i linked it in the description but fifth linebacker that kind of fell apart a little bit but again fifth because it wasn't as important i talked about wide receivers not staying healthy can you guess what happened uh i talked about d line not essentially you know getting a consistent pass rush that did kind of happen through the uh one and seven start until we started zero blitzing a little bit more i talked about running backs our run game was 30th ranked or yeah 30th ranked in the nfl and i talked about offensive line which was ranked 32nd in the nfl so it's pretty spot on with my list of areas that need to improve for us to have a successful 2021. Um, and they didn't necessarily. So we didn't have uh, people want to say it was a winning season. So we should hang our hats on that success to me is making the playoffs. And that is the thing I constantly hear back to back winning seasons. That's like running a race and getting a participation trophy. Do you really care? Does it make you feel good to get a participation trophy? Do you want to actually do something? So to hear back-to-back -back winning seasons but not make the playoffs bothers me. So, so we're going to jump into this again, 5-1. to one. Um, I might move them around while I'm sitting here thinking about it, talking about it. Uh, I do have some on here that I've, I'm like, so I'm going to move some around. To me, the number five is def defensive line depth. Um, adding Trey Flowers, adding Melvin Ingram, even though they're going to be outside linebacker. To me, the defensive line depth kind of worries me. Those guys are the big guys up front. They're going to get banged up. It's going to happen. I hope, you know, I don't want to see anyone get hurt. But behind Christian Wilkins, behind Sealer, behind Agba, 
it's like, who do we really have? You know what I'm saying? Raekwon Davis. John Jenkins is decent. Uh, I wouldn't be scared of him. It, I just, the D-line doesn't scare me. The D-line depth doesn't scare me. That has always been a, a worry for me. Um, it was a worry for me last year. I had it higher at three. This year it's lower at five. Um, but, yeah. It, 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 it's not big enough that I need to sit here and talk about it for too long, if you could tell. It just worries me a little bit. So that's an area that, you know, hopefully the depth, you know, steps up a little bit. Number four for me is middle linebacker. Um, we haven't had a decent middle linebacker since Joey Porter, Shannon Crowder. It's been a while. It's been a while. Now Tyndall, Roberts, Baker. Now Tyndall's a rookie. I'm, I don't know what I, I'm going to get out of him. He's supposedly, when it, you look at the depth chart, again, I'm going to look at the depth chart before the season starts. To really get a good idea when they release the first official depth chart um, to see where he's actually listed, but he's not that high up. They have Baker, they have Roberts, they have Scarlett's go on IR for a few weeks. Um, Riley, like they have guys ahead of him, and they say it's still um, we don't have those guys, those middle linebackers. They don't that are like watch out, and I'm not talking like we need you know perennial. Hall of Famers, Ray Lewis, Zach Thomas, Brian Urlacher type. But we don't even have guys that you're afraid to run it up the middle because these guys are going to knock your helmet off. So that does worry me, and I would like to see that middle linebacker position kind of step up a little bit um, and just prove me wrong. A lot of this is just proving me wrong, my worries. Prove my worries wrong and make me feel better. But who the heck am I to ask for these things? <laughs> number three thing on here, and some of you guys are going to be like, number three, you should be number one. So ship -dip -dip -boo -boo. Quarterback play. Uh, health to his health, to his consistency. For the Dolphins to have a successful 2022, the quarterback play needs to be better. Now, again, it's number three. It's number three. So before, you know, you jump down my throat if you think that, oh, there's other things that equate to quarterback play. I know. I know. That's why it's number three. I know. And I know there's going to be people like, number three, you should be number one. You're such a two in the air. <laughs> um, but it, consistency. You play with that aggression. Stay healthy. To me, the biggest thing with Tua Tonga Vailoa and it, his consistency does worry me, right? Because, again, people say he can't do things, he doesn't do things. They don't watch or they watch with blinders on and only focus on what they want to see. Because when you say he can't do things, he doesn't do things, it's false. It's false. It's 100% false. Consistently, that's where it comes in, right? He does things, right? For me... My biggest worry with Tutanga Vailoa is his health. If two, and again, you can, I, I don't deal with conspiracies. I don't deal with rumors. I don't deal with any of that stuff. I just, I'm going to give you what is on paper facts, right? That's what I always give you. He was put on IR for whatever reason you want to say he was put on IR, but regardless, he did seriously hurt, he hurt himself because Jesse Davis, the turns out right tackle made him. Take a nasty hit. Any quarterback in the NFL would have broke a rib. He missed four weeks. <clears throat> if he would have, and again, I will go to my grave saying this. I would put money on this. If Tua never went to IR, first off, I think they would have had a better chance against Buffalo. Whoa, you stupid. Mac, jo um, Mac Jones. Jacoby Brissett got down to the red zone multiple times, either through an interception or the ball was turned over. Two is too scared to throw interceptions. That's what some of you guys don't like about him. I honestly think they would have beat the Colts and they would have beat the Raiders if two had never got hurt. I don't think they would have beat the Bucks and I don't think they would have beat the Bills. But I think they would have beat the Colts and I think they would have beat the Raiders, which would have put them in the playoffs regardless of that Titans game. It's his health. And that's where he, the, the quarterback position needs to step up, and that's why it's number three. He needs, to, he needs to play 17 games at a high, consistent level, and that's why also consistency is there. <laughs> 
But again, there's other things that equate to that, and I will get to that. Number two for me is cornerback depth. Didn't scare me. When the season started, well, the offseason or the training camp or OTA started, <clears throat> areas of this team that didn't worry me were wide receiver, corners, safeties, uh, ends, running backs. Now, all of a sudden, corners scares me. We have no depth. Trill Williams goes down. Byron Jones is going to be out for the first four weeks. You look at uh, practice the other day. You, we didn't see any of Nick Needham. We didn't see Eric Rowe, Clayton Fedgelum. Thank God Xavier Howard and Keon Crossan were back on the field. But it's like, what is what is going on? Did you not foresee this, Miami? So you might want to address it now. Just like the center position, which hopefully they were right about the center position. So the cornerback depth is number two for me um it's pivotal especially you know if you if you can't stop a quick slant it doesn't matter how good your defensive line is and i noticed that when i was watching preseason noah monogamy could not stop a quick slant he was so far off the ball it was ridiculous it doesn't matter how quick you send a zero blitz you get a quick slant the guy's open it doesn't matter but my number one thing and I'm pretty sure this is the number one thing on everyone's list of areas that need to improve or positions that need to step up. It's the offensive line. This season is dependent on this offensive line being successful. A thousand percent. Two is success. Depends on the offensive line being successful. The run game depends on the offensive line being successful. To a success also depends on the run game being successful. <laughs> but do you see how I don't have run game on here? Because it all comes down to the offensive line. You saw it when I broke down film of the Eagles game when Tua actually threw to whoever he wanted to when he, ever, when he wanted to because of the fake pitch, because of the play action. You saw those linebackers crashing down. You saw those linebackers focusing on stopping the run, allowing Tyreek Hill to get open over the middle allowed in Craig Craft to get open in the end zone. It pulls it. Mike McDaniel's system is all about taking the plays and moving it over here and having your playmaker go that way. You saw it with uh, Zaquandre White. Wow, I couldn't get that name out. That touchdown play that Skyler Thompson threw to him. Watch it again. He had two receivers on the left running in routes to the right. One was a mid, one was a deep. He had a wide receiver on the right running a go route. All of the attention of the defense was taken, well, if you're the quarterback, was taken to the right side of the field. And then he had Saquandre White run a wheel route on the left side of the field. I think it was a little bit of a delayed wheel route too. So when Skylar Thompson drops back, he does what he's supposed to do. The play is designed to go to Saquandre White. You might say, oh, he looked and no one was, no, 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 no. The play was made to go to Saquandre White. I'm probably keep saying his name wrong, but whatever. What Skylar Thompson was doing was pulling the defense over. That was the point of the play. Make your reads, reads, pull the defense over and then dump it. <clears throat> Watch that touchdown again. Watch how quickly Skylar Thompson throws it to white he like the reads were and then he threw it to white because he's like let me pull the defense and then it's like when the quarterbacks pull the safety away because they know they want to throw the goal route on the left side so they'll pull the safety i'm going to look over here and then i'm going to throw it same thing happened and that is what mike mcdaniel's offense is all about misdirection and if you can't run the ball if you can't block to allow this mis misdire misdirection to happen, it don't matter. So to me, the number one thing that the Miami Dolphins, what area or whatever needs to step up is the offensive line. Point blank. If the Dolphins, and I say this every year, but every year it doesn't happen. If the Dolphins can get a top five offensive line and a top five defensive line, they will, and I'm not saying could or anything, they will win the division. If they can get a top five offense defensive line, they will win the division. It's just a matter of can they do it? But comment below and let me know what you think. What's your list? Give me your list of areas that need to step up 
in the order. Comment below, let me know. And let me get to comment of the day. Now, this comment, uh, like I said, uh, Eps123, cool guy. You all know him. You know him from panels and seen him on Miami Sports Music, TD Fence Talk, all that stuff. Really awesome dude. Um, it's me a very genuinely good question, and I'm pretty sure a good portion of you guys asked the same question. Uh, he asked it to me, uh, TD and Steven, on Twitter. He says, serious question, not joking. How are fans, uh, myself included, supposed to believe in Tua when this organization has done everything to show us they don't? Watson paying Teddy uh, as much as Jimmy G, uh, r rosterizing, rostering, good word, three quarterbacks. Help me understand why I shouldn't, uh, why I should believe in the kid Tua when the franchise clearly doesn't. It's a very good, very logical question, um, and that's why I picked it, because I answered it on Twitter, but again, I can articulate more here. Because he's the Miami Dolphins quarterback. Now, I'm not saying blindly, but because he's the Miami Dolphins quarterback. Do you want the team to win? If you want the team to win, you root for Tua to be successful. You root for Tua to be good. Um, that's one reason, because he's the Dolphins quarterback. Also, the Miami Dolphins have been underdogs for how long, right? We're never really picked to win games and we end up winning. Uh, we do successful and then they still poo-poo us. Like, we're always the underdog. Our quarterback is literally the example of being the underdog. Media doesn't think he's good enough. Media gives Mac Jones excuses that two and didn't get. Well, Mac Jones is in a new system, and Mac Jones this, and Mac Jones receivers weren't doing well, and we'll see about that. But then Tua doesn't get that. There's a small portion of the fan base that wants Tua gone, is rooting against their own quarterback. I don't get it. I don't. Like, there's debates about Tua. Like, I, I don't understand the the want to not root for Tua. I don't understand the want to root for somebody else to take his spot. I've had somebody literally comment hoping he gets injured. A Dolphin fan. Hoping Tua gets injured so he doesn't play anymore. These are the reasons to root for him. Because like you said, the Dolphins went out. They went out and tried to get uh, Tom Brady. They went out and tried to get Deshaun Watson. They never went out and get Jimmy Garoppolo. That was never going to happen. It was, just, it was just a stupid rumor. But those two quarterbacks, they went out and tried to replace Tua twice. Why not root for the underdog? Why not root for your quarterback who's constantly getting crapped on? That's why. But I want to read Cash Money had a very good comment to this. And he was very respectful. Again, it was a genuine question. One, two, three reps wasn't being, like, a jerk or anything. It was a very good question. Cash Money says that's exactly it, essentially to what I said, which I abbreviated because I had to fit on Twitter. If you're a Dolphin fan, you root for your quarterback and players to be successful. If they prove they can't, it's a business, you move on. The team is set up for being successful across the board, and I'm not talking, I'm not talking being a mediocre team because uh, I've seen that for years. A real contender. He also states, uh, season starts next week. I can't wait. All the talk and narrative don't mean blank. Uh, you want to shut people up, ball out, and win. The rest uh, will take care of itself. Couldn't say it better myself. Especially the first couple sentences. If you're a Dolphin fan, you root for your quarterback and player to be successful. If they prove they can't, it's a business you move on. Plain and simple. I get called a two and ear, a two and on, a two a dee doo dee, a two a dee doo dee doo 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 doo, because I defend the Miami Dolphins quarterback from stupid, idiotic takes. But if the Miami Dolphins quarterback proves to me that he can't do the job, and it's time to move on, then it's time to move on. I'm all about winning. I'm all about winning for this. Plain and simple. Cash Money hit the, the nail on the head. I'm a Dolphin fan. Tua Tungavaloa is a Dolphin quarterback. That kid has been drugged through the mud. And I'm rooting for him even harder because of that. So that's why I'm rooting for him. His whole organization twice tried to replace him. Shut him up. Prove him wrong, Tua. But unfortunately, if you don't, your time's up. <laughs>
NFL, not for long. That's the way it is. So I hope I explained it better. Um, but yeah, at this point, everyone's doing their due diligence to have a narrative and talk about two of this and two. <clears throat> got a week from Sunday. Shut them up. Get on the field, win. There's going to be a small portion of the fan base <clears throat> that won't shut up and will say, yeah, but Tua can go on a 5-0 and winning streak and shock the world and beat the beat the Patriots, beat the Ravens, beat the Bengals, beat the Bills. Beat Yeah, that's because we had to put everything around them. Or yeah, that's because, yeah, that won't give them credit. That's when you just ignore it. Move on. But Epps, great question. Hope I answered it. Hope Cash Money answered it. Hope you get a good understanding of where we're coming from. I'm a Dolphin fan. I've been a Dolphin fan since 1995. And I'm not going to stop being a Dolphin fan, regardless who the quarterback is. I rooted for Ryan Fitzpatrick just as much as I'm rooting for Tua. I rooted for Josh Rosen just as much as I'm rooting for Tua. I rooted for Jay Feather. I Should I really run down the list of quarterbacks we've had since <laughs> Dan Marino? I rooted for them all because I want to win. And it's best for the Dolphins organization if two is successful because then we don't have to use draft picks to get another quarterback. Plain and simple. Drop the mic. I'm done. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I think I have a video planned for tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow. But on that, like usual, stay classy. Fins up.